So the next main event for NWO is going to be Gordon Ryan versus Lucas Hulk Barbosa. This is the second time that they're going to be against each other, so I thought it would be a good time to check out their first match. So Barbosa gets the inside collar tie on Gordon Ryan, and Gordon Ryan strips it by shucking his head to the left. That strips the collar tie, and that forces Barbosa to react because he wants to get inside position again. But because his hand is across Gordon's body, Gordon pushes Barbosa's elbow across his body, and that exposes Barbosa's back. Gordon then immediately starts attacking his hips. Barbosa is doing everything in his power to turn back into him. Because Gordon has inside control, he opts to get the overhook, and because they're spinning, it's a good opportunity for him to go for an Uchimata. I thought it was a really good attempt by Barbosa. But if you watch someone who is good at Uchimatas, they'll tell you that the leg needs to be near the opponent's knee, not their groin area. Go, switch inside. And if you look at the positioning of my right leg, it's close to his knee here. Right. If it's close to his groin and I go to kick, he just hops with me. We want to kick the inside of the knee, just like a butterfly guard sweep should attack the inside of the knee. Because now when he tries to hop, uh, for him to follow us there, yeah. As soon as Gordon plants his feet, he drives through Barbosa, where he has no base, which causes them to fall. Now, if they had stayed in this position, I think Gordon would have been in a really good position. He has the underhook and he's close to getting the back, but because they landed out of bounds, I think that changes the entire match. So we're starting again in neutral position. We see a little bit of hand fighting going on, and then we see Barbosa shoot for a single leg. You can see that Gordon is trying to lock up a guillotine grip immediately, but Barbosa does a good job of keeping his head on the inside of Gordon's chest, which gets rid of the grip. As Gordon is on one foot, he feeds Barbosa's head to his left side into the guillotine grip, and Barbosa decides that's a good time to switch from the single leg to the double leg. You can tell from the impact of hitting the floor that that allows Barbosa to focus getting his head back into Gordon's chest and he's unable to keep that guillotine grip. When Gordon gets his butterfly hook, he does something that you learn on the first day of jiu-jitsu and does a very simple technical stand-up. Again, Gordon tries to feed Barbosa's head into a guillotine grip and Barbosa wants nothing to do with that, gets his head back into the middle of the chest and pushes Gordon away. So you can tell during this match that Gordon was really favoring trying to get that guillotine set up. You can see here that they both over under on each other. It looks like Barboza is grabbing Gordon's elbow while Gordon is grabbing Barboza's wrist. As Gordon backs up, he waits for Barboza's left foot to step forward. Gordon then attacks the knee tap on Barboza's right leg. Now the timing for Gordon was very good on this attack, but Barboza has ridiculously fast reflexes. As soon as he feels Gordon's weight shift into a commitment forward, you can see that Barboza is able to shift his body. This causes Gordon to attack Barboza's thigh rather than the back of his knee. This little difference allows Barboza to not fall from the knee tap and to keep his balance standing up. Notice also how Gordon is able to commit his head forward because Barboza's right arm is trapped between his own body and Gordon's head. So there's no chance of a guillotine attack here. Because Gordon wasn't able to secure the knee tap, he looks to attack the hips and go for back control. But that same arm that was trapped also allows him to have inside position during the scramble and avoids the back being exposed and avoids the takedown. Now this part I thought was a very cool exchange from both guys. Barbosa is trying to use his athleticism to get past Gordon's guard and jumps in the air. 
While in the air, Gordon secures an overhook on his left side. He has a butterfly hook on the left side and grabbing Barboza's left tricep with his right arm, trying to collapse Barboza's posting arm. But Barboza, being an incredibly athletic guy, is able to swim his right arm out of Gordon's overhook while he's in the air. And instead of Gordon conceding a neutral position, which I think most people would have done in this position, he decides to invert and immediately starts attacking a leg. Barboza is hyper aware of this, jumps his leg out of the area, and avoids any sort of takedown attempt from Gordon again. So after a little bit of hand fighting from the standing position, we're able to see for a split second that Barboza is to go two on one on Gordon's right arm. And he uses that to attack a double leg. Gordon is quick to sprawl, and it is a very good sprawl. But because Barboza has very good posture and he's able to keep his back straight, he's not able to get the takedown, but he is able to continue attacking from the standing position. Barboza tries to cut the corner with another double leg, but unfortunately, he doesn't have his right arm by Gordon's right knee to collapse it. That allows Gordon to continue standing. Barboza still has the single leg because again, throughout all of this, he is keeping very good posture. Again, Barboza goes for another double leg off the single leg. Barboza does try to correct his mistake by having his legs by Gordon's knee. However, because his head is now on the inside, he doesn't have that counter force working for him. Barboza is still able to keep the single leg, and this time, instead of going for the double leg, he does a very smart move and decides to run the pipe instead, which throws Gordon off guard, and he is on his butt for a second. Gordon has to get to his knees, so he does everything in his power to fight back up. Barboza again tries for another takedown by lifting Gordon and he is able to get both feet up into the air but he doesn't have anything collapsing Gordon's base. So Gordon is able to just maintain his balance and land back on both feet. Barboza is able to get behind Gordon for a second and trip him. Now I can see what Barboza was trying to do. If Barboza tries to go to his left side, Gordon would have no problem turtling and getting back to his feet. So Barboza ends up cutting to the right side because he wants to put that pressure at an angle where Gordon isn't able to use that post on his left arm. But because Barboza is letting Gordon get to his knees, he isn't able to get to the angle that he wants in time. And regardless, Gordon is able to get to his feet once again. Now we see that Gordon grabs a Kimura grip and this is a very serious Kimura grip because Barboza has to give up his left grip and he has to focus on defending his right arm. Now while Gordon is leaning back, Barboza makes his right arm go limp for a split second and yanks his right arm out. Because they're sweaty and slippery, this is a great move to use at this point. If they were dry and he tried to do this, it definitely would have been a gamble. Barboza tries to get on as quickly as possible but Gordon does a great job again keeping inside position with both his knee and his left arm that gives him frames to be able to get to his knees and again he's able to get back on his feet again Gordon goes for that Kimura grip but Barboza this time defends it by using his knee to pry Gordon's right grip off. Gordon is thinking about getting the Kimura grip again, but he ends up abandoning it. Because Gordon doesn't have any sort of Kimura grip, Barboza, because he's directly behind him, he's able to lift him up in the air and bring Gordon down to the mat. Gordon is very good at just getting back up immediately to his knees. And at this point, you can tell that Barboza is much tired than he was before. Now he's leaning forward instead of having an upright position and Gordon decides to capitalize on this. Gordon sees an opportunity to slide his body to his left hand side and that creates an angle that is going to break Barboza's grip. 
Now Gordon has a headlock position and he doesn't want to give this up. He drags Barboza back to the mat and you can see that Gordon is circling to his left hand side. Barboza is trying his best to keep his right hand up so Gordon can't pass to the back. When Barboza's elbow hits the mat, you can see that Gordon uses his left elbow as a frame to keep Barboza's arm in place so he can't put his arm back up. Now Gordon brings his knee above Barboza's elbow. Barboza cannot stop Gordon from getting towards the back. From here, Gordon switches his arm positioning on his right side to start going for a seatbelt to attack the back. Barboza grabs Gordon's right leg, trying to bring him down to the mat, but this also puts him in a crucifix position. Gordon is looking to stay on top of him. He doesn't want Barboza to be able to drive him to the mat, so he stays on his knees in the crucifix, and he continues to look for the seatbelt grip. Gordon does end up giving up that seatbelt position and when he does, Barboza tries to elevate and bring Gordon back down to the mat. Gordon is able to grab this grip. Now with this grip, Gordon doesn't mind leaning back to the mat because it gives him clearance on his leg to grab a hook on Barboza's right side. And if he just keeps leaning back, it starts exposing Barboza's back. Barboza is doing his best to try to get his back onto the mat for defense, but Gordon has this figure four position that is not allowing Barboza's hips to get to the mat. When Gordon starts bringing him to the left side, that's when he starts attacking the mount position. Barboza does eventually start getting his legs free, but because his upper body is elevated, Gordon can switch his hips and now he's in a leg drag position. From here, Barboza wants to avoid the guard pass, so he turtles. And that's when Gordon starts attacking the back. Gordon gets his right hook in, then he starts attacking with a power half, which opens Barboza's left side, and then Gordon can insert his left hook. Gordon then switches over to the seatbelt grip, and Barboza has done a good job up until this point, but he does have to concede three points for the back take. There's only about 45 seconds left in the match. Gordon does go for the rear naked choke in this position, but but at this point, he secured his three points. He's not going to give up this position. And that is how Gordon defeated Lucas Barboza at ADCC. Let me know if there are any other matches that you want me to go over in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.